Hello, my name is Dr. Johnny Wilkinson. I'm the ICU lead for the Trust and I'm COVID contingency lead along with Dr. John Hardwick. I'd like to talk to you today about COVID-19, what it's about and what we can do to help. If you get coronavirus, COVID-19, you will turn into a zombie. This is not true. If you get coronavirus, you are going to die. This is absolutely not true either. Hoarding toilet rolls and mass panic, that's going on. This is not necessary. The community are up in arms at the moment. I think if the correct messages get out there that actually this is okay, we will deal with this and cope with this nicely, is what we need to be spreading. But that is reality. There is panic out there, as you've seen. Please check out criticalcarenorthampton.com, QR code there to scan. We're packing stuff together for you all so it's clear, easy to access, and hopefully this will get rid of some of the noise around what's going on. So what is coronavirus? Coronaviruses are typically benign. They give us the common cold. We've all had them. The kids have had them. Everyone recovers from this, but it can be irritating. This strain, COVID-19, COVID identified 2019, we think came from animals originally and managed to cross over into human beings. This is what we call a zoonosis, animal to human passage. This is where SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 comes in. Now, we all know what happened in China. There was a 16% mortality which hit the news and made everyone panic. With appropriate measures, training of staff, appropriate personal protective equipment in, and really good quarantining, they brought that right down to 0.8% mortality. This is fabulous news. It's fabulous because we've got the same measures in place here and we've learnt from them so we won't make the same mistakes. The cases in China are dropping day by day. It's under control. We are ahead of the game, we've learnt from them, therefore we can make this under control for us too. 98% of cases are mild, please remember this. 92% will recover, remember that too. The virus itself, it can be a little bit of a monkey to be fair. You breathe it in in droplet infection from coughs and sneezes, it sits and lodges down in the lungs, gets into the cells down there, and it can destroy some of those cells, causing problems with your breathing. At the worst, pneumonia, and then ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, we will get involved then as ICU physicians. Most will have a mild infection. It'll be a bit of an irritating cough, possibly a temperature. You'll self-isolate, you'll come back to work. Some will come into hospital, get treated on the wards and go no further than that and go home. Others, yes, they will suffer and we will cope by dealing with it and uh, helping the patients out when they are at their last legs of this virus, as it were. But those are going to be quite rare cases in amongst the whole of this population. Fever, cough, shortness of breath and temperature are common things. And as I've said, ARDS is the worst end of the spectrum and certainly not everyone's going to get this. These are the unlucky ones. We will cope with that by doing things that we can do with the ICU. And also, we've got to bear in mind there are members of staff who are slightly more vulnerable than others we will look after you, help to identify you confidentially, and we will help you and protect you at all costs. Symptoms, five to 24 days incubation. Some people have no symptoms at all and carry it. We don't know whether they infect other people. Some will have the infection and manifest the symptoms. As I've said, mainly rare to have really severe symptoms, and in the main, they're fairly trivial. Care is supportive, look after yourselves, keep hydrated, and if you go home and self-isolate, Please keep well hydrated and eat plenty of food. Try and keep yourselves nice and fit around the edge of all of this. There are drugs that can help. We have good stocks of those drugs. There are large scale clinical trials going on. There is a vaccine. It is available, but not quite yet for us in the UK, but it is there. The measures you see in the community, closing schools, people stopping work, people stopping gathering in large numbers at Premiership football games and the Saints games. These are sensible and this is attempting to stop the spread. We have to follow government guidance. The good thing is the NHS have released directives whereby healthcare workers, children can still be looked after at school and nurseries. So we thank the government for that. Self-quarantining may involve taking tablets, getting medication, having the appropriate food stocks and toilet roll. Of course, we know what's going on there. There's a lot of panic, but food and things are still available. The panic is dissipating and diminishing. Lots of different measures are in place. We will look after everybody here at Northampton. 
the cleaning that's going on all around the trust is there for a reason and we know that this virus can survive on surfaces for a while. The domestic teams are being trained and everyone is very aware of how we need to keep everybody safe. Surgical protection, PPE, all of these things you'll be seeing around range from basic masks to the full respirator masks that only pretty much will be getting involved within the extreme cases. We've got plenty of stocks of all of this kit. Please don't panic about this. There are obvious measures like travel stopping and washing our hands. Washing our hands is very, very important and it's a huge thing we can all do together to prevent the spread of this infection. There are cleaning and sterilisation uh, manoeuvres going on, uh, but those are only really going on in the high risk places. Things for us, wash your hands at all costs and be aware of your personal hygiene, etc. so that we can minimise the spread of the virus around the trust. In summary slide, here's everything you need to know. Keep your hands clean. Remember there are vulnerable staff at risk here. We will protect them. Please don't panic because most will get it and if they do, they will recover. Together, we can fight this. It's all about teamwork and I think we're very good at that at NGH. The training we have in place is going so well and we are ahead of the game here. So together, if we sing from one song sheet, look after each other, we can absolutely win the battle against this virus. As I've said, there is a battle plan in place. We're going to fight this thing and we'll come out the other end much better for it. The NHS may not be the same again when we get out the other end, but I think there are only positives can come from this. Look after ourselves. This is dead, dead important here. We need to complement each other, recognise everyone has a role to play here, and support each other where we can. We are all one team here. We've got to eat well, we've got to drink plenty of water. Please ensure that you're all doing this and we're making things much clearer and easier for the staff to be looked after. It may be that restaurants are only available for the staff, but we are certainly blanketing out the need for hydration by giving away free water bottles and so forth. We don't need to panic. We've got it under control. As far as training, PPE and the protective measures go, so we can cope with this together and we don't need to panic. It's very important to spend time with our families and our children. They are as worried about us as we are about them, so we need to all look after ourselves and our families and spend time with them. That's it. Please go to the website, scan the code and check out the resources on there. The street will be providing information as will our comms teams here at the General. Go forth, destroy this, destroy the panic and we'll all win the battle in the end and come out the other end smiling.